So, I was totally not expecting us to get to 100 subs so quick, which means I don't have anything special prepared for this occasion. I did actually plan a 100 subs special in which I would review Pacific Rim, but I then realized there was nothing really special about that except that I had promised myself to cover this movie as soon as we had reached this milestone. So, what do you guys want for the 100 subs special? Do you want me to talk about Pacific Rim? Do you want me to goof out and make a Godzilla version of the poker rap? Or do you want something else I haven't thought of yet? I can do all of the above too. Let me know in the comments below. And now for something completely different. The Prisoner is a 1967 English TV show with a behind-the-scenes story that is as straightforward as the show itself, which means it isn't. It all started during production of the last few episodes of Danger Man, or as it is known across the pond, Secret Agent. Secret Agent Man, Secret Agent Man. Yeah, that one. Patrick McGuhan, star of the show, was growing tired of it and went to producer George Markstein with an idea he had for a brand new series, also revolving around the world of espionage, but telling the story of a secret agent who one day quits his job only to find himself later kidnapped by mysterious people and trapped in a mass surveil village. Although most sources credit McGuhan as the sole creator of the show, later interviews with Markstein point to him as just as big an influence on it as the other men, specifically the idea of a village where people who know too much are placed to avoid becoming a safety concern, something integral to the whole concept of the show and which Markenstein would have based on a real place created by the British government in Scotland during World War II. The fact is that both McGuhan and Markenstein had equal creative input during the show's development, but they later wanted for this new series to be a spiritual follow-up to Danger Man, that is, a grounded spy fiction. The protagonists were even supposed to be the same person in Mark Stein's vision. McGuhan, on the other hand, intended for the prisoner to be more surreal and experimental, an exploration of individual versus society in an ambient where conformity is always looking for ways of crushing exceptionality or something like that, I'm not sure what exactly did he intend for the show. At the end of the day though, it's clear that the actor and eventually protagonist of the series won with The Prisoner becoming one of the quirkiest, most unique pieces of television of the 60s. Actually forgot about that, The Prisoner is one of the most unique pieces of television, period. If you've never heard of it, that's understandable. The show is heavily on the cult side of the pop culture spectrum, meaning it has a massive following inside certain circles, while the general audience is completely ignorant of its existence. But since this is what I'm going for with this channel anyway, better for me, I guess. Still, The Prisoner grew in time to become highly influential in its own right, shaping later more high-profile shows like Lost and Twin Peaks, which overflow with the same kind of weird and mysterious vibe its inspiration emanates. Like I said, the show's premise is of a British agent resigning and then being immediately kidnapped and locked away in a weird village where everyone is referred to only as numbers. He becomes number 6 and in each episode has to deal with the new number 2 of the place using an often zany and most certainly impractical scheme to break the man and make him spill off the beans on why he quit his job. That being the 1960s and all, the episodes are fairly episodic and questions such as who kidnapped number 6 and why did he resign are left unanswered, but it's exactly these hanging plot threads that never go anywhere, 
that compose one half of the show's addicting aura of mystery and uncertainty. In time, you will be no longer wondering if number 6 will escape the village or if that week's number 2 will make him talk, but rather which weird plan will the villains try to use to convert the hero or which dangerous way will number 6 find to escape that hellish place and how everyone will be outsmarted by each other. Like the spy thriller Mark Stein vision, there are enough twists and turns in each episode to make your neck break. But that's just the first half of what made the show so real the way it is. The other half is its visual presentation, mixing the best of the worst of 1960s aesthetics with avant-garde filmmaking to create what is seriously one of the best opening sequences in any show ever. Like, look at this! It's a mini movie on its own and tells you everything you need to know about the show in a super visually dynamic way and through a rocking soundtrack that will keep living in your head rent free until the end of times. The second half of it is super quotable as well. Who are you? The new number two. Who is number one? You are number six. I am not a number. I am a free man. <laughs> the episodes themselves are no slouch either, making terrific use of color, a feature actually imposed by the distributor in order for it to be more marketable in the US. It's hard to imagine how the show would look like without all those neon green and orange lava lamps drawing your eyes to the corners of the rooms and distracting you from the rest of the action. More often than not though, the show will look weird accentuating the way it feels weird to create an experience that at first will force you to constantly double take the screen, but which will eventually become normal for you, just like it did for number 6, who definitely grew accustomed to the village, just like one of the very first number 2 said he would. Of course, number 6 never really stopped looking over his shoulder, and with good reason. It's this cozy but still somewhat wrong sense of normality that drives much of the series, as if you've just grown used to something that is not quite right. This feeling was just starting to kick in with people back in the 1960s, so seeing a TV show dealing with this kind of stuff way back when really struck with the people who watch it. It had something to say back when most television only had things to sell, denouncing current trends and aesthetics, and marking the mainstream and the conformism that comes with it as something to be feared, not sought after. With that in mind, we shouldn't be surprised that the show never really took off with the large masses. It's almost like it was engineered to do so. Hell, in regards to the ending, McGuhan himself said it was created specifically to make people confused and angry. And it did. They sent him rage mail and pop it up at his doorstep, looking for answers he clearly didn't have. Sounds familiar? But then again, maybe he was full of shit and just didn't have enough time or money to come up with a proper finale, which is the version some people tell and which also sounds familiar. Like I said though, it did hit big with certain people, many of them very prominent creators in their own right, and not just in television. Comic book writer Alan Moore loves to insert a shout out or two to the show in his works, while Iron Maiden composed not one but two songs based on the series. But the cherry of the cake has to be the freaking Beatles who liked the show enough during its original airing to allow All You Need Is Love to be used in the grand finale under a special licensing condition that allows it to still be aired with the original recording to this day, not only making it one of the three or four TV shows to ever feature an original recording from the band not only one of the few that aired while they were still together, but one of the few to still feature the music in its soundtrack. This is the ultimate legacy of The Prisoner. It hit gold with the right people, even if most of us were ultimately unaware of its existence. 
And that's why you should most definitely give the show a try if I manage to get you even marginally interested. It's super worth it, and if you guys get really into it, I might even consider talking about individual episodes in here. If you want it, of course, I'm always open to suggestions, so hit me up in the comments below. Next time, we celebrate our first milestone. Stay tuned!